Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. Although I'm very sorry that I'm not able to welcome you all to Berlin, I'm excited to be part of this novel conference. A huge thank you to Magda and Roland who came up with the idea and who have worked on this plan B. Who knows, we might be setting an environmentally friendly trend. However, everyone at the Museum Village Triple is very sad that we won't be able to show you around and exchange information on our mutual interests and problems. It would have been a great opportunity to have so many experts in our museum. And as everyone knows, the best ideas are born over a pint in a pub. But we have to make the best of it. A number of volunteers have spent a lot of time during the last couple of weeks researching ways to make the conference as interactive as possible and helping with turning the presentations into high quality videos. A big thank you to all of you. Although it does not beat a live visit, at least I can give a short introduction to the Museum Village Düppel. Discovered in 1939, the site was excavated by Adrian von Müller, director of the State Museum of Pre- and Early History in Berlin from 1967 onwards as a research project funded by the Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft, DFG, the German Research Association. Almost the entire settlement was excavated showing a horseshoe-shaped setup of houses, including wells, tar pitch kilns, pottery, some iron objects and Slavic temple rings. The surviving wood from the wells could be dated using dendrochronology. The dates suggest that the settlement was only occupied for about 50 years, from about 1180 to 1230 AD. Historically, this is an interesting period in the Brandenburg area. The region was settled by pagan Slavic tribes during the early Middle Ages and repeatedly attacked by crusade-like campaigns from the West. In 1157, the area came under Christian control as the Ascanians took over Brandenburg. From around 1200 onwards, settlers from the West came in large numbers to set up villages. The finds from Dippel indicate that there were both Slavic people and Western settlers present in the medieval village. However, who founded it and what religion was practiced is difficult to tell, as the assimilation must have taken some time. In the 1970s, Düppel was the most completely excavated medieval settlement in the region. In order to make the research accessible to the public, The idea was born to reconstruct a model medieval village on the excavated site. As the City Council of Berlin was not willing to support this idea, enthusiasts set up a society of volunteers and began building the museum village Düppel. It was not only the houses which were reconstructed, but also different types of forests, fields, pastures and gardens. Volunteers set up craft groups within the society in order to bring medieval crafts and the intangible heritage back to life, both for research and demonstration purposes. Although the society had a scientific advisory board and networked with experimental archaeologists across Europe, there was never a coherent and standardized way of documenting the reconstructions and other activities. As there was no paid staff responsible for the scientific aspect of the museum and reconstructions, this haphazard approach is understandable. In fact, it is absolutely incredible what has been achieved by the volunteers of the Düppel Society in their spare time. The City Museum Berlin finally took its responsibilities towards Düppel series in 2016 although Düppel has been part of the City Museum since 1995. This means there now is paid staff responsible for exhibitions, research events and education. When I started in 2017 as curator of the Open Air Museum, I identified two main building sites, the exhibition spaces inside and outside and the necessity of standardized documentation practices. The exhibition I could take care of with a number of highly experienced colleagues in the City Museum. For the documentation aspect, I began to network and chat at XR, European Association for the Advancement of Experimental Archaeology, and XARC conferences. I wanted to develop standards and documentation 
which could be used by all archaeological open-air museums in order to create larger sample sizes of comparable raw data, which could then be used for further research. My calls for cooperation on these aspects amongst archaeological open-air museums in the German-speaking countries had only few replies. The main problem is the lack of scientific staff at museums, so any documentation strategies would have to be very easy to follow and would be able to be carried out by volunteers. The biggest result so far, thanks to ExArc, is the EU application on the topic that we submitted last November. We will know if we were successful only in summer. So this conference was planned as one further step towards standardized documentation strategies and I'm really happy about all the very interesting papers and I'm truly looking forward to the virtual discussions. A major step towards such standards was taken in a student seminar on the topic of documentation carried out in Düppel by the Institute for Prehistoric Archaeology of the Free University of Berlin, led by Enrico Lenhardt. The presentations by him and his students will illustrate the problems and possibilities and be a great starting point for further discussions. Another big thank you to all involved. I wish everyone an interesting and innovative conference. Greetings from rural Brandenburg. We are working in isolation from our little house outside Berlin. Stay safe and healthy. Enjoy the presentations and discussions.